plants. Bones show that when humans started growing plants for food, we got smaller. Now, this is something that we see across the entire world and at different time periods. When a population would go through an agricultural revolution, they would get smaller, they would get less healthy, and it would happen relatively quickly. This is something that's virtually incontrovertible. There are many explanations for this, but it does draw into question whether plants truly are good for us. You may have heard the popular YouTube video, Plants Are Trying to Kill Us. It's a catchy phrase because most of us have seen many research studies showing that plants are supposed to be good for us. Well, in 2022, the journal Nature, the most prestigious journal in the entire world, published an editorial where the author was taking a look at some research on the strength of evidence behind various food recommendations, such as whether we should be eating red meat and whether we should be eating vegetables. The author related that the research actually is fairly weak and that the health studies that we're looking at need to get a whole lot better or the general population will become distrustful of the supposed experts. In this video, we'll take a look at whether plants truly are bad for us, and we'll take a look at the best evidence available. In 2013, a paper came out entitled Animal Plant Warfare. The idea is that plants contain a lot of toxins. They've evolved over time to create defense chemicals. They can't run from things that would try to eat them, and so these chemicals are their primary defense against various things that might be trying to eat them. They try to make those kinds of predators sick or potentially even kill them. Let's take a look at at least two of those many kinds of toxins contained in plants. The first of them would be oxalates. Oxalates are something that we see in large quantities in foods that we often consider healthy. For example, here's a paper about a woman who actually died from drinking what she considered to be a healthy smoothie. She was juicing various kinds of greens in order to improve her health, but it also increased the level of the oxalates and their absorbability, and she ultimately died. We can also take a look at lectins. Lectins are yet another kind of plant toxin that we see in very high quantities in foods that we commonly eat. Here's a paper about 1,000 people in Japan who all at the same time got poisoning from lectins. They were watching a television show that was supposedly teaching them how to cook something healthy. They were following along at home and they ended up in the hospital. Aside from toxins, plants contain something called antinutrients or phytate. Antinutrients are things that bind to various minerals and make it so that we can't use those minerals. This includes minerals like zinc, magnesium, iron, and calcium. Probably the best known example would be spinach. We all know that spinach has a lot of iron in it, but we can only actually use about 2% because of antinutrients. Of course, most of us aren't dropping dead or getting sick right after eating a bowl of vegetables. What we really want to know are the long-term health implications. There's a video that we've created that you can watch about that by clicking the link above. And as that video shows, we really don't have very good evidence about the long-term health implications of various kinds of things that we eat. That would include chocolate, wine, red meat, and vegetables. And that's why so many doctors disagree about what we should eat. Perhaps the best evidence of whether plants are good for us or bad would be the fact that so many people are switching to a carnivore diet, a meat-only diet, and experiencing improvements in their health. We're even seeing people cure what seem to be incurable conditions. There's another video we've produced that you can watch by clicking the link above, and it's specifically on that topic. People curing themselves what seem to be incurable conditions by eating a carnivore diet. In the next video, we'll take a look at why that might be. Why are people who are eating a carnivore diet experiencing these miraculous changes in their health? I'll give you a hint. It goes beyond simple vegetables. Thanks for watching.